All right, guys, in this video, we are going to continue exploring angular unit testing. And in particular, we are going to look at testing services when using testbed. So testing services is one of the easiest thing to do in angular unit testing. And for starters, let's generate some brand new service in our angular application and see what default tests come with it and maybe add a method and try to test uh, that. So to generate a service, we would run the command ng and then here usually you would specify source and whatever path to your service. But here I'm just going to say that it's going to be service one and that's it. Let's see what it generates. Actually, I, I should specify that ng should run the command for generate like that and then say service and then I provide the service name like so. Okay, it's just put it straight in the app directory so I should be able to open it in my VS code. Okay, if I type here service one, there you go. That is the service class. And that is, this is its test that was generated by default. What do you have here by default? So you have some testbed configuration that does nothing, all right. And then the first test, you just it just asserts that the service was generated by grabbing the service from the test bed after it was injected. It, it wasn't even injected anywhere explicitly, right? No, it wasn't. That's interesting. All right, so let's let's take a stab at doing some test driven development. Let's say this will be our test or let me copy this as a sample. Okay. And here I would say should, I don't know, return true when calling foo method. All right, this will be our test. And before I try to write anything in here, I'm going to start the test runner. Here I'll reuse this command and say just ng test. <coughs> Give it a second to start up and I'll expand this window pane. Actually, I can see the test execution here in this browser tab or I can see it in this console. I actually prefer the console most of the time. So I'm going to hide this window and just look at the console. All right, we have five tests executing and now to finish the test for this service, I will say, so what are we testing here? That the service will have a method foo and you would call it like this and you will receive a value in this in inside of this expect statement. And I will say that I will expect uh, the value of that foo method to be returned to be true. Just like this. So we just took a, took test driven development for a spin. We created the test and let's see how it fails because we don't implement we didn't implement any functionality that'll make this test pass. And the first thing that fails is that it says that service that foo doesn't, it, it's nothing. We're trying to call something that doesn't exist on the service. So let's go into the service and declare this foo function. And then let's have it return tree. Okay, rerunning the test and wow, that was fast and ex it's executed and everything's passing. All right, that's, so that's how you test methods on uh, services. And that's, that's super simple.
Where things get a little bit more complicated is when your service relies on some other services to do its job and um, that's where you need to do mocking. It pretty much boils down to mocking other services that this service relies on. So let's say uh, in this service, like forget about tests. When one server rel a service relies on another one, usually what happens is that some other service is being injected into here, uh, into constructor. So usually it, it can be private uh, property or public, whatever, it doesn't matter here. But it would be, let's say, it will be some kind of service too. Okay. It'll be the kind of, I'm sorry, not the kind, but the class name of the service will be um, service two, for example. Right. Actually, it'll be, oh, you see, um, the naming conven convention here assumes with, uh, with Angular when you generating services using CLI. It takes whatever the name you specified for your service and then it appends the word service to it. So you see how it became a little bit funky with my naming convention. So I will continue that, although it looks a little silly. So this will be service to service when I generate this uh, service to. Okay. And that's how you inject another service into your service and then in methods here, you would use it with something like um, you would, you know, declare a value here, or I'm sorry, declare a variable, let's say variable one or two, whatever. And then you would use this service to, and then let's say I'll have method bar, and then it'll return something and that's the value you will have and you'll do something with this value maybe return it directly or you would concatenate it with um, my string or whatever you know whatever your service needs to do so i'm just spitballing here but that's what it looks like when you're injecting stuff and let's let's generate this service real quick service two so that it exists and doesn't throw errors let's go in, in our original pane here generate service to you just like this and in here i'll be able to use autocomplete functionality to import it here on top now it's not highlighted and i'm going to go into service two and declare bar method just so that it does not return an error and here i'll return um string from service two or whatever okay so now i have two services service one relies on service two to be injected and it's using it's using it here for whatever purposes and what comes to testing how can i possibly test method foo now when it relies on this injected service and what do i do with the fact that it relies on it and maybe behind the scenes this dot bar function does something really complicated that in the environment or in the runtime of this method i'm sorry of this test um you just can't afford to bootstrap all that stuff that happens behind the scenes so it comes down to mocking you need to uh, mock this stuff and then that's how you test just the functionality that your test um, that your service is implementing so how you would do that is using dependency injection and mocking with that so we go to the tests of service one and let's see here it already highlights some stuff Meaning that uh, I think that's because when you return foo, what it returns here because of the result of concatenation, it returns my string. So uh, here, let's see, it will return my string, but it will have a part from the other service. Okay, so it doesn't matter right now hugely, but to solve this problem of my service using the other service, you need to do some mocking. Before we do that, let me see what happens when the test runs. Just theoretically, what's going to happen? 
Now it says uh, expected string from service to concatenated with my string to be my string. Okay, you see how in our tests we are asserting that it should be my string that would return by foo, but what it actually is is that part concatenated with my string. And that's because in the implementation of foo, it uses this bar uh, method that returns this string. So let me copy that and then maybe update my test to say that it's concatenation of those two strings. And if I rerun the test, it's passing. Look at this. So I didn't actually need to mock anything. Everything just worked. So under the hood, when this test ran, it looked that my service needs service2 to be injected. And it did inject that. It provided it during the runtime of the test. And it, when it came time to get executing method foo and method bar on service2, it just let to execute that as it is implemented in bar method right here. So it didn't mock anything. It just injected service to as it is and let everything run. But the problem here arises when um, in the bar method, uh, it does some crazy things. It pulls up another 15 services and does some, uh, touches a lot of things in the application and you would need to mock everything that happens in the bar and that gets crazy. So what you do instead is you, when the test runs, you make sure that when the test bed is, when the test bed sees that your service relies on other service, you sneak up and you supply a mocked version of the service where you would say that, oh, if you, if in the my, in my test, during my test, when you call dot bar, um, you know what? Don't don't call everything that's under the hood of bar. Um, instead, just return this mocked value that I'm going to supply. Now, how to do that is let's see if the guide tells you how to do that. So in the in the test configure test module, you would use providers where you could use something like this, but it doesn't really show how to mock it. And there you go. Here, here we have a clue. So what we need to do is to specify providers property in the test bed. And it says that you need to provide both the service that we are testing and then the other service that we need to mock. So let's copy this here, go back to the test implementation and let's find this bit. I'm going to change this up a little bit. Do it like this, actually no, paste it here. And then that's where you specify providers, right? Now in the providers, it says you need to provide the method that you're, I'm sorry, the service that you're testing. So that'll be that. And then the second is the service that you are mocking that the service that needs to be injected through the constructor. Remember, this is the service too that's being injected in the constructor. And that's what we need to inject through the testbed configuration. So I'll just paste it here and then use autocomplete function to paste it on top. And then for use value, that's where we are going to supply the, uh, the mock. So I'm going to go back to the guide and also copy this spy example. And where are they sticking it in the before each in the beginning of before each. Okay, so I'm going to stick it in here. And what they're doing here is they're specifying the name of the service through the creates by object thingy. And this is the method that you are uh, that you want this 
mock to have. So in our case, it'll be bar like that. And okay, that should take care of injecting the service to service and using its mocked value instead of letting it inject the real thing that happens here, like this is the real thing, it's not going to inject that, it's going to inject a mocked version of it, which is the spy with the name of the service and the bar method. All right, so it's a really simplified version of that, uh, of the service too. So what's the, what's the next step uh, here? We need to make sure that we mock the return of the bar method. Here, we are not mocking that yet. Let's see the guide for more examples. Is there going to be any mocking? Yep, here's how you mock, or here they call it stubbed value. So this is the string that would allow you to do that. So you type in the name of the spy, which is what is it? Here they say it's this. Okay, I need to declare the spy and then I need to grab the injected uh, instance from the testbed. So let me declare, uh, let me steal this variable here and then I'll just use it here and then I'll replace the values so this is going to be service two, and then this is going to be service two spy. I use their naming convention. And then I need to grab the instance that we marked here during the injection process. So that was injected uh, before the test started, right, in the before each. And then during the test, we can grab that instance that's, that was marked and injected using testbed get mechanism. So I'll, I'll type in this variable name. That's why we created here to grab the reference from the testbed. So it'll be testbed.get and you use same injection token as you, we used during the um, provide statement and paste that here. And this should reference the service that was injected and mocked. So therefore, we can use mocking statement where we will say service to service dot bar. We call the method and then we say and return value. This is, I believe this is standard Jasmine spy stuff here. Um, oh, this, this should say spy. And, and this should start with small letter and this looks good now i should say that return value i'll say um, service to string that's what we are mocking the bar method to be uh, to return during our test run now according to this mock i should say that i expect the final result of calling foo to be concatenation of this string, what I'm walking to be in bar, and whatever is being concatenated in the foo method. So remember, because foo method uh, relies on the return of the bar method that we are mocking in the unit test, and then there these values are being concatenated. So I believe that's all it really needs to do a mocked run of this test. So let's rerun it and it fails. It says that it expected service to string my string to be service to string my string. That looks pretty identical to me. Why is it? Oh, oh, here's, here's some additional two. Where is it coming from? I think I just, uh, it was a mistake. It shouldn't be there at all. So let's rerun the test. And now that's passing. And now we just learned how to mock one service that's being injected in the service that we're testing. All right, I think this was good for now. Next, we're going to start looking at whatever's next in the guide. And that is start testing some of the component stuff.